Lewis Hamilton leaving Mercedes for Ferrari could be a good thing for Mercedes to experience in the long run. But don't think it's going to be easy for them. It's going to be painful. I think it's safe to say that Lewis Hamilton leaving Mercedes is probably one of the biggest things to have happened in F1 since, well, the last time he left a team he had been with for a long time and was expected to be with for the duration. We should have seen it coming because it was a combination of many things. The supposed downturn in performance, a supposed desire to do less promotional work for McLaren, because seriously, Ron Dennis worked his drivers to the bone with sponsors, as well as having Nicky Lauda in their ear just going, go on, go on, you know you want to, but only with an Austrian accent, as Lauda recalled, to do what Michael Schumacher couldn't and bring the team to the top for real. And that, alongside many other talented individuals, is exactly what he did. Now, much like in 2012, Lewis Hamilton has seemingly been left dissatisfied with his lot at Mercedes, having had a really good run with the team and been there for over a decade at this point. So that's not too shabby an arrangement being at a team for a whole decade. But it has become obvious that Lewis Hamilton is no longer satisfied with where the car has been developed in this era of cars from 2022. The ground effect era has clearly thrown Mercedes for a loop and they are only now starting to come to terms with it. And in the wake of all of this, the CEO of Ferrari, John Elkin, has basically said, whatever you want, Lewis, we'll give it to you. With supposedly nearly a half a billion dollar deal for a multi-year contract. And this coming about not too long before a major rule change comes about, which is a similar situation that McLaren found themselves when they lost Lewis to Mercedes and then, well, I mean, look what happened with Mercedes. But what's also come about is that there may have been some dissatisfaction with the Mercedes-Benz board and Lewis Hamilton, a culmination of the rumors that had been spreading for many months up to this point and stuff that I've included on the channel before, that there have been sticking points with the long-term arrangement of Lewis's relationship with Mercedes, him wanting to be an ambassador for about 10 years after he stopped racing, and that Mercedes-Benz weren't exactly confident in giving this to him, as it would mean giving him a lot of money potentially for not necessarily driving a car and, you know, bringing them championships and titles. Maybe they had lost faith in Lewis's ability to provide them enough success to justify the cost of keeping him around with a bumper contract. Something that the likes of Damon Hill had been mooting way back in the summer of last year, that if there had been any sticking points, it might have had something to do with the board getting cold feet with Lewis and that maybe this was all out of Toto Wolff's hands. But I can understand why Lewis Hamilton would want to be a brand ambassador of Mercedes. He's been championed by Mercedes since he was the age of 13. He had been lured to Mercedes by Nicky Lauda, who was a brand ambassador for the Mercedes team. So I can understand why he would have been a bit shocked and disappointed that Mercedes weren't all that accommodating according to reports. In short, Lewis Hamilton wanted reassurances that Mercedes wanted him for the long term and way into the future after he stopped racing in F1. But ultimately, he didn't get that. Instead of a multi-year contract, he got a one plus one deal, similar to what Hulkenberg has at Haas. One year definitely racing and then an option for either party to take or reject in going for another season for 2025. Now, when you go from what Lewis wanted to what he actually got, that's a major step down in terms of confidence that maybe Mercedes didn't really see a good return on their recent investment with Lewis, that there hadn't been results forthcoming and what was the point of continuing this arrangement? You know, with two seasons and no victories and the only victory that Mercedes has had in the last two seasons has come from the other driver. According to Toto, he was looking to find something that was maybe a little longer but more fixed, like a two-year contract or maybe even a three-year contract. Sure, it's not an absolute super duper multi-year contract that goes from such and such and beyond, but it's a fixed contract instead of a one plus one. It's not too dissimilar to what Valtteri Bottas was having when he kept getting a rolling one year deal. And when you have that, you are constantly looking over your neck and thinking, well, who, who, who's, who's gonna replace me? So in a way, Lewis was sampling what his old teammate was going through. But in a way, I can sort of understand why Mercedes were getting cold feet. Doesn't necessarily mean I agree with them. You see, in Formula One, being at the same team for a decade or over a decade is an extreme rarity. Michael Schumacher was with Ferrari for over a decade, and even the sands of time couldn't keep him there forever. Technically, Max Verstappen will surpass a decade in the Red Bull camp, 
if you count his FP1 sessions for Toro Rosso in 2014 as technically racing in Formula 1, but even when he gets to the end of his bumper contract deal in 2028, supposedly if he sticks around, he may have been around Red Bull for nearly 15 years. That's huge. That doesn't often happen. I guess Mercedes wanted a change. And possibly considering how much Lewis is worth, maybe they needed some uh, spare change. So in comes Ferrari, flush with cash after their car business having their most profitable year ever in 2023, with a bid to basically say yes to everything Lewis Hamilton wants. A multi-year contract, a commitment and pledge to support his initiatives, as well as throwing a lot of money towards them, not just promises. And of course, the allure of finishing off his Formula 1 career wearing red overalls, something that Lewis has always talked about but never really acted upon. And continuing the adage that Sebastian Vettel said that everybody's a Ferrari fan, even if they say they're not. Supposedly, Ferrari has taken on board Lewis Hamilton with an open invitation to anyone that works with Lewis Hamilton to come and join them at Ferrari. Since Lewis Hamilton can't bring them over on his own accord, there's a non-poaching clause in a way. So if they were to go with him, they would have to go off their own volition. So what does this mean for Mercedes? Well, in the short term, it will be devastating and probably incredibly demoralizing. The idea of Lewis Hamilton departing your team due to a mixture of mediocre car performance relative to previous years, as well as the higher ups at Mercedes losing patience and faith in him, would be probably soul destroying for all concerned as well as Lewis himself. Lewis Hamilton is the kind of driver who seeks reassurance from the team that they are backing him 100%, that they believe in him, that they know that he can do it, that he has the tools in which to make things happen. And when you get that sort of talk from on high, that they basically don't see a long-term future with you, that's going to come as a hammer blow. And then, of course, Ferrari get wind of this, and then boom, they just swoop in and take him. So, yet again, in Formula 1, contract baiting and finagling and dawdling has led to a superstar driver leaving the team. Much like Fernando Alonso with Alpine, them dragging their feet and baiting, and then ultimately, they lose Fernando Alonso to Aston Martin, and they lose Oscar Piastri. This is not the first time this has happened, nor will it be the last. Lewis probably senses that if he was going to move to one more team, he has to do it right now instead of waiting any longer, despite the fact he hadn't even driven the W15 in the simulator before he made the steal. But much like with Fernando moving to Aston Martin, he just had to make the move. Losing somebody like Lewis will also mean that their fan base will drastically change. No longer the titans of F1, the team is going through a change of dynamic with many staff members moving to different teams, retiring or leaving F1 altogether. And the only major player left in terms of car development is the likes of James Allison, who came on board in 2017 and was one of the proponents for their much more dominant era from 2017, 18, 19, 20. And with Lewis going over to Ferrari and his fans joining the Tifosi, making some sort of mega super fandom that may even rival the likes of the Orange Army for Verstappen, this is probably going to see many fans across the world abandoning their Mercedes merchandise and seeing a major dip for support in Mercedes. They have lost quite a few sponsors, including the likes of Monster, which had been around since before Mercedes was even a thing. This was back from the Braun days. It will remind me of the situation where Daniel Ricciardo was dropped by McLaren and a huge chunk of their support which had been gained in the wake of the team acquiring him in 2020, dropped the team. Losing a driver like that is naturally going to send the spotlight away from that team and to somewhere else. And Ferrari right now, they have loads of spotlight over them because it's Ferrari, they have Charles Leclerc, they are doing relatively okay, and again, they're Ferrari. And I'm pretty sure that right now, if you work for Mercedes, you're kind of unsure whether or not you will see that spotlight again. But in a way, this could be good for them because many pressures will be instantly gone and what they need to do can be done in quiet, nobody paying attention. But one thing is absolutely certain, Lewis Hamilton is not only a massively popular driver, he is a massively popular well, everything. Outside of the sport, everybody knows his name. Whatever he does and wherever he goes, the media and the fans follow in their droves. The news of his move to Ferrari, even before it had been officially confirmed, was all over the mainstream media, unlike anything that I see in Formula One outside of a Grand Prix weekend. Ferrari is once again seemingly happy to take in the pressure of bringing a very experienced driver and a very decorated driver at that. In the last 30 years, they have acquired the likes of Alain Prost, Michael Schumacher, Sebastian Vettel, Fernando Alonso to name a few. They know what they're doing when they are securing the likes of multiple world champions and giving them the opportunity as well as their own personal goal to bring a championship to Ferrari's door. And them subsequently failing or falling out. 
and Michael Schumacher being the only exception. But I don't think they fully understand the ramifications of bringing in Lewis Hamilton. Of course, over the last few decades, they have acquired multiple world champions, but even Michael Schumacher was just a double world champion when he signed for Ferrari. Lewis, he is a seven time world champion. In terms of the lead in to this acquisition, we're not quite sure how long it took. Some sources say that this has been going on since Monaco 2023. And some people are saying that this was as recent as three weeks ago, because there had been rumblings that Carlos Sainz was about to sign an extension three weeks ago for Ferrari for at least one or two more years. And then obviously John Elkin, the CEO, got wind that there was discontent with Lewis Hamilton's camp. And so he approached them again and then boom, they made the deal there and then. But some people think that Lewis Hamilton is not prepared for what the Tifosi will have in store for him. Ferrari engineer Rob Smedley, you know, the Felipe baby guy, reckons that Lewis Hamilton will be overwhelmed by the support and attention that the Tifosi will be giving him when he arrives in Maranello racing in red. But in a way, this really shouldn't come as a surprise. Over the decades, drivers who have been the Tifosi's worst enemy for the longest time would suddenly forget all about that and welcome you in with open arms if you now drive for them. And of course, if you win at Monza for Ferrari, they will love you until the end of time. Like when Vettel moved to Ferrari from Red Bull. All of their angst and turmoil and discord and hate, that was all gone. But maybe that's what Lewis is looking for. A place where he will be welcomed, valued and even loved because it is quite clear that that is exactly what Lewis Hamilton wants from a team. Assurance, a sense of value, being loved, that they are backing him 100% and that in turn, he will give 100% back to them. And that's not what seemingly he was getting at Mercedes anymore. And now he might get that at Ferrari in spades. So while all that's going on and Ferrari either revels in the extra attention from Lewis's fans or is completely overwhelmed by their attention and the concept of two mega brands combining into something utterly untamable swallows them whole, Mercedes will be left a husk of its former self. Granted, they still have top tier tools, they are planning an upgrade to their Brackley facilities, but they're not exactly in the doldrums when it comes to money, one of the things being a good thing in terms of the cost cap. They're not just chasing an unlimited budget and therefore just spending themselves into oblivion. There will still be a massive hole left by Lewis Hamilton's departure. And the last remains of Ross Braun's establishing of that team back in 2013 and before, that will be gone. However, this might be for the best because over the years, Mercedes have had to deal with tremendous amounts of pressure. And I bring your attention to that letter. The letter written to Mercedes' fans in the wake of the Bahrain Grand Prix last year, where they clearly were going to have another uncertain year keeping the concept from last season. The way I saw it, this was a response to the utter battering the team received from social media. The team being dogpiled from all directions for giving Lewis Hamilton, the seven time champion, a car again that wouldn't win titles. It was immense pressure for anybody working at Mercedes and probably filled them with a mixture of dread, tension, stress, fear, pressure absolutely overwhelming them. They're probably drowning in absolute agony and terror from what's being unleashed on social media because it can be really cruel out there. And if you're trying to do your job with all of that going on in the background, that's not going to yield beneficial results. Sure, sometimes working under pressure could be a good thing, but this kind of pressure is probably not a good thing and probably will lead to reactive decisions being made rather than proactive ones and thinking about the future, which is why we got the Franken car of Monaco desperately trying to get away from the concept that was kept over from 2022 and come up with something that's relatively more like Red Bulls, but then they're stuck with the cost cap, they can't build a new chassis until next year, and then ultimately Mike Elliott gets made as a scapegoat and then Mercedes pin all the blame on him unfairly. Mercedes are losing a big star, there is no denying that. But this could be a big opportunity to prepare things for the new regulation changes coming in 2026, away from the limelight and spotlight of Lewis Hamilton. This could be a good thing where they can develop in quiet, away from the stressful times of Lewis Hamilton, and just try and find themselves anew. With Hamilton gone, Mercedes can hopefully aim to do what McLaren did in the wake of Alonso's retirement in 2018. After Fernando waltzed off to do endurance racing for a bit, McLaren brought in new people, including Andreas Seidel, as well as giving their young talent Lando Norris a shot, as well as giving Carlos Sainz his first multi-year deal of his career, outside of the bosom of Red Bull. McLaren, much like Mercedes, had fallen on hard times in the wake of the Honda agreement, and then eventually when they left, realising that, hey, maybe some of the fault with this car was down to the car and not the power unit. Oh, we're the problem. Ah. 
So I can easily see what Mercedes is going through right now. They are not in the ideal position where they want to be and then realize what they need to fix and who they need to bring in and what they can do in the quiet. Throughout 2019 and 2020, they were slowly developing and resetting themselves and it benefited them massively, ending up P3 in 2020. And then they sort of went backward again with Daniel Ricciardo or that external social media pressure. They then fumbled, then Daniel was gone and now they're sort of back on the up again. But one thing is certain, my friend, Mercedes now is not the team that won all of those titles in the 2010s. They're not. Much like how McLaren aren't the same dominating team that they were in the 80s, or Ferrari aren't the same team that they were in the 2000s when they were just waltzing to victory all the time. People move about teams all the time. The brain drain is continuous. People leave one team to go to another team, and then they leave again to go to another team, and then the cycle repeats itself for infinity. Mercedes need to accept that to allow themselves to become something more, away from the intense scrutiny of fans and the media. Now, many people have been citing George Russell as the problem, the root cause as to why Lewis is leaving Mercedes to go to Ferrari, because he's supposedly scared and annoyed by the teammate. I don't think so. It seems to be quite clear that Lewis wasn't getting the assurances from the higher ups in the executive board of Mercedes. He wanted long term reassurance. He wasn't getting it. Ferrari were going to give it to him. So naturally he would go because he's not getting any younger and he needs to fulfill his dreams and hopefully get that eighth title or at least a couple more wins. And no, this has nothing to do with my British bias. Ferrari right now are flush with cash and they were prepared to drop nearly half a billion dollars for Lewis Hamilton in the long term because they'll realize that the returns that they will get for having this mega brand will be more than half a billion dollars. But right now, Mercedes, they just don't have the inclination to drop that kind of cash for a contract extension and probably a pay increase. So maybe with Lewis Hamilton gone, we might see George Russell become a completely different driver. And I saw some of that in Sakia 2020 when he subbed in for Lewis Hamilton. We saw a driver who was prepared to do everything for Mercedes. Mercedes gave him the time of day. They gave him the room to breathe alongside Valtteri Bottas, who again is one of the best wingman in Formula One history. And we saw fantastic things with George. George just took like a duck to water and had it not been for a puncture and then a pit stop error, he probably might have won that race and we might have seen him completely differently. So maybe if he's given the keys to Mercedes, he's given the chance to lead the team and help restructure it and build morale like he did at Williams, giving them some sense of hope and then bringing that last place car to eighth place in 2021, and of course, in a way, get that magnificent Spa qualifying second place, we might see fantastic stuff and Mercedes rebuilding itself into something new, something leaner, more agile, being able to adapt. Also, if you take into account the Mercedes rumors that the 2026 power unit of theirs is developing very nicely and could be the creme de la creme of the new regulation era, then this gives me some hope that Mercedes might be able to recover away from the spotlight in quiet without anybody noticing whilst everyone's paying attention to Lewis at Ferrari, Mercedes might be cooking something and have an opportunity to do something proactive instead of frantically trying to find something new in the wake of social media backlash. Give them some time to soul search and reset away from Lewis Hamilton. This might yield benefits from Mercedes after some short term pain. All teams go through this. Some of them successfully are able to reset themselves and then some of them, well, they end up like Williams for the longest time. So who could realistically replace Lewis going forward and be the partner to George to bring Mercedes some hopefully brand new victories and glory? I've got plenty of ideas and I will share them with you now in this video. You can go and watch next.